Uh, we've got a special guest in the, his house. Declare yourself. Hi. Hi, can you hear me? We can hear you. Declare yourself. I know, you, I know when you love when I call in. I do love when you call in. You're the only one okay. that'll call in. I, 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 I guess I'm brave. Um, I want to go back. I want to rewind. Do what I said about how little you know about Putin. And I'm going to explain why I said it. And I, I know that you were talking about the in, intelligence agencies. <clears throat> I'm not going to discuss that. What I'm going to say, as somebody from Eastern European descent who spends a lot, a lot of time with people who are Polish or Ukrainian, people, you know, who are from Georgia. This is something that's been discussed forever since Putin has been in power. When like, you say I this, guess, what are you talking? What is this? Him going into Ukraine. This is specifically Ukraine. I mean, there, there's also been talk, you know, uh, the discussion of when they went into Georgia. Um, I stuck. I can I can't pronounce it. Estonia, Eston Estonia. I, yeah, Estonia. You know they constantly are running. Um, they're constantly running drills. So as somebody like I said, I'm Polish, Polish Jew, on my father's side. I still have that connection with that part of my heritage and that part of like where I come from, and so. I hear, I, I'm not talking about the intelligence agencies. I'm not talking about your news sources. Right now I'm talking about everyday people and the conversations that are being had. And Putin going into the Ukraine, did I know that it was going to happen this time? No, because he's done, he, he's built up troops off and on at different borders throughout the entire time that he has been in power, but it was an inevitability everybody knew that at some point it was going to happen and <clears throat> well i agree with you there i agree i mean that, this is i agree that it was an inevitability my question to you is is that who's responsible for it being an inevitable outcome him okay him. that's that's where you and i disagree that, and i i know that's where you and i disagree and and i know that you draw all of your information from news sources that's and, and news sources that's on news sources have john hershey that john hershmeyer is not a news source sadie noam chomsky is not a news source okay but what i'm saying is like if you actually sit down and talk to people who are first second even third generation like myself and they talk about putin and they talk about russia and they talk about everything that has led up to this point it it's there's an understanding that the countries that went that belong to NATO that applied for NATO membership did so as a way to protect themselves from being absolved back into it. Say that the, was the initial reason. Say that the, is the initial reason. And Ukraine again chooses wanted to go back to NATO based on you know it's it's kind of like if he hits me once, is he going to hit me again? Probably. Sadie, is there what? a single expert in uh, that specializes in uh, Eastern Europe that has not said in the last 30 years that NATO expansion eastward was a red line for Russia? I'm not saying that they didn't say that, but what I'm saying is for people who actually come from that area, they totally understand and why Ukraine wanted to be part of NATO. They understand why Finland now wants to be part of NATO, and Russia has made it very clear that if okay. Finland applies for NATO membership, they're going to be demised as well. NATO's these a, countries uh, and these people have... NATO's, NATO's what? NATO's a hostile military alliance. Isn't that true? No, NATO is not a hostile military alliance. NATO, NATO has is not, not... a hostile... Okay, name a single person who would... E name Name any expert in the field who would ever characterize NATO, NATO as NATO, anything other than that? It's not hostile. It's preventative. Can you answer my question? It's not. It's it. I just did. It's not hostile. I don't think you heard it's my preventative. question. I don't think you heard my you, question. Let me ask it again. 
Name a single expert in the in in the field that would say that NATO is anything other than a hostile military alliance. I, I don't have a list of, of I I have cook brain. I don't okay, have so a I list can, of I can name I can name right now off the top of my head John Hirschmeyer, <laughs> Noam Chomsky, Rand Paul, Ron Paul, every single person Gorbachev, Yeltsin, every single person who's ever commented well, of on this. Gorbachev issue. is gonna say that. I mean Yeltsin and Gorbachev, are you going to say that they're like completely good actors because well, we're I, not I don't think we're not going to like, commit yeah. the genetic fallacy and say just because they're <laughs> russian that they're not telling the truth right we have to go by the merits of the claim um, so, so okay what we well have... i i'm gonna go by genetics i i i will go okay, by that's, genetics. that's a logical that's, fallacy that's there also, there is nothing that gorbachev said. I, no i'm just telling also you almost from, racist I, I i i'm going to tell you that there is absolutely nothing gorbachev can say knowing his history that i will take even with a grain of salt. Okay, so you're you you are, and I. One of the things I love about you is your how explicitly truthful you are. You're saying that you are good with committing the genetic fallacy insofar as it applies to Russians. As insofar as it applies to Gorbachev, I'm not so saying Gorbachev, Russians across Yeltsin, Gorbachev, Yeltsin, Putin. We're going to automatically dis dismiss everything well, they have to say. Yel Yeltsin's a whole total. Yeltsin is a totally different beast. And Did I, Yeltsin I mean, disagree about NATO being a hostile military alliance? Yeah, but I'm saying as far as I don't view Gorbachev and Yeltsin in the same light. Okay. I, I just don't, I don't. I don't. Group, okay, I don't so, see them in the same light. Hold on. Okay. I don't see them in the same light because when Yeltsin was in charge of Russia, I'll just say in charge of Russia, he swung away from the communist and the soviet um okay. you know foundation he, he so extremely okay, that so he, it caused russia to fall into chaos okay so he that was also, when the gangs that's when the gangs were running russia it was it was a fucking hot debacle okay so, Gorbachev, so can we review this for a second Every mm -hmm. single expert in the field characterizes NATO as a hostile military alliance. You don't have any expert that denies that. Is that true? Is that right? Yeah, I, I'm not okay. going to sit here and say I'm I'm going on expert opinion. What I'm telling okay. you, but you're going against is, expert opinion. Isn't that true? I'm going. I am. I am telling you that my point of view comes directly from the people who have lived in this situation yeah but it's contrary to you, every expert on the planet this, well i mean i take it as you will but what your, i'm saying what i'm saying know what it's like to be russians yeah okay so yeah your russian actually, friends are i was gonna i was gonna ta i was gonna share this with you okay so back two decades back when i was in my early 20s i used to spend some time out in alphabet city squatting you know where alphabet city is right nope what are you talking about Alphabet City in, in on the east side of Manhattan. I used to hang on it. I, I, what I spent street? some time what on number, What number street is it? Avenue A. Oh, okay. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Go ahead. We used, we used to run, at, like, off and on. I was out there visiting friends. Um, so the Nikos. I, I was friends with two Nikos. First Nico is Nico V. And he is a descendant of... Um, He's a descendant of Polish Jews, and he lost multiple members of his family in the Holocaust. OK. And I had actually written a little bit about this in one of my responses. Now, Nico F was Russian. He was he his family like he was first generation Russian. And I'm not even sure that he's technically first generation Russian. I think that it's possible he could have been born in Russia. But I remember one night we were sitting there, we were having a conversation um, because Nico V has his great grandfather's Auschwitz number as a tattoo. He wears it on his back to remember where, you know, what what he carries with him. Thank God we had the Russians to beat those Nazis. OK, well, th this is the interesting thing, and I wrote it down. I'm smoking like a fiend. Um. Anyway, Nico F., whose family grew up in Russia, they didn't know about the Holocaust. They didn't know about the Holocaust because the Red Army and the Soviet Union never 
recognized the Nazis and equated them to the Holocaust and the annihilation of the Jews. In Dear Russia, sister. Dear sister. What? Dear sister. Yeah. I'm sorry, but your friend from the Lower East Side, his his singular opinion is completely no, the, irrelevant. A, no, I'm going to I'm going to explain it further. That's the reason why the Black Book was never published in Russia, because Stalin did not want uniqueness given to the Jews. In yeah. Russia, under yeah, but Stalin, I, but the Nazis. Sadie, hold on, I'm explaining this to you. Sadie, what question I, are you answering? I just want to make sure we don't waste everybody's time. I asked you a specific question. Are you ans Are you gonna get around to answering the question I'm asking you? Because I don't know if you forgot the question I asked you. Because this is supposed I'm, to be in response to something. This is supposed to be in response to whether I base my facts on global experts or whether I base it on the people that I know. You asked me if I knew somebody who was Russian. And I'm telling you that I did know somebody who was Russian. Okay, I so actually know is, a lot okay. of Russian people. And okay. the way that they have been presented the West is totally like, it, it's bizarre. It's bizarre, their view of the West. What is it, what, what is this exists in Russia? would boggle your mind and yeah, what does that have to do with noam chomsky saying that this is a red line for russia though no noam chomsky says that it's a red line for russia norm chomsky is a fucking beat is a peacenik he hates the american imperialism and i to a degree understand that okay. i i'm not saying that i don't and he was incredibly <laughs> incredibly useful in ending the vietnam war I don't agree with all of Norm Chomsky's okay, so he's opinions. Pro, he's pro peace and anti imperialism. Uh huh. Yeah. And he is saying he he is saying along with every other expert in the region that eastward European NATO expansion would would universally be interpreted as hostile by but Russia. But I'm explaining why those people want NATO. I'm explaining why those people want NATO. They That's want irrelevant. NATO. That's not how relevant. is it irrelevant? How is it irrelevant if the people, the people, want this? For, for how, this like, for, why, like, why? How did? How does this, that happen? I'll, I'll explain. How does it happen that I'll, the, the me, wants me, of the explain. population? You asked me. I'll explain it to you. I'll explain it to you. I'm an American. In the antebellum South, the majority of the people wanted slavery. They were wrong. That's why it's not You're, relevant. The, okay. the desires, and secondly, secondly, Sadie, you continuously erase the Russian populace in Ukraine. The Eastern Ukrainian Russian identifying folks did not want to join NATO. So they also have to be included. Any but the Western Ukrainians who desired NATO were desiring a setup for World War III. That's why I'm saying their desires are completely irrelevant to me when the experts in the field are saying this may trigger a nuclear exchange between two, two nuclear powers. That's why I'm saying that their desires on the street in Western Ukraine are irrelevant. <sighs> yeah, wow. Can you acknowledge wow. can you acknowledge the Russian citizens in Ukraine who don't who don't want NATO expansion? Can you acknowledge them? I can acknowledge that they're not the large percentage of the population. I didn't say they were. I just simply demonstrated that not all Ukrainians want that. Western Ukrainians who are anti-Russian want that. A but vast majority of the Ukrainians want but, that. But their desires are contrary to the to the uh, global. Okay, okay, so so what you're saying is that the smaller faction should have sway over the larger faction. No, what I'm because saying because the larger number of the population wants NATO and wants the EU, and they're a sovereign nation. They should have the right to do that. And NATO Where? Is what you in chart what you in charter says that they have the right to join a hostile military alliance. It's not a hostile military alliance. It's okay. preventative. The experts disagree with you. Mm. Name me an expert who denies that NATO is a hostile military alliance. I'll probably go ahead and Google that when I'm done. And secondly, secondly, Sadie, let me ask you this question. If NATO was a hostile military alliance, would that change your position? If there was actual proof of hostility, if there was actual proof of Serbia? like NATO, Serbia, Libya, <clears throat> we we literally deposed that. Uh, that was that was that was Syria was not 
or Libya was not on the Russian border. Who killed Muammar Gaddafi? Who got involved in killing Muammar Gaddafi? That was NATO. That wasn't directed at Russia. No, no, no. You're saying where is the evidence of hostility? NATO took out a guy who to posed Russia. no threat to them. To Russia. Okay, so my point is, my point is, the Russians to have Russia. already... I, 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 I'm explaining it to you. The Russians have already said, and every single expert who studies that region says, NATO expansion is a red line to Russia. On top of that, in, in less than a decade, just a decade ago, we literally invaded a sovereign country and killed the leader. <laughs> so, so... Uh, you're asking the can Russians I, can to. I, can I make, just let me can finish I make this an point. observation? Let me land this plane and then you go. You're so in light of that, you're expecting Russia to continue to deal with this eastward expansion and then say, "Don't worry about it. We're not going to do it to you," even though the country that's at your border is extremely hostile to you. Go ahead. Okay, NATO wasn't going to allow the Ukraine membership. What were they saying publicly? They were saying publicly that it was stalled. Did they it's say it's been stalled? They, they it's said been it was stalled. I, I agree. They it, said it was stalled, but they didn't say that it was never going to happen publicly, did they? No, but they said it was stalled, it, and it was a constant source of debate. But it wasn't like they were joining NATO tomorrow. Like Ukraine applied for membership, just like they applied for membership to the you know EU. But that didn't mean that they were given membership. Yeah. So Russia, instead of waiting to see how everything was going to fall, decided to go in and invade the yeah. country without it actually becoming a member of NATO or without, without NATO really putting it on the docket. Sadie, February 7th, 2019, the Ukrainians amended their constitution to allow for NATO expansion to Ukraine. Yeah. Okay, so that doesn't so, that doesn't mean so, that NATO was going to allow them membership. Okay, so here 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 is what the Russians are seeing. And uh, so you're saying you're saying that like I you're basically saying that if my neighbor doesn't like what I'm doing, they have the right to come into my house and doesn't you know, like what you're doing. It? No, no, no. Uh, here, here here's an analogy. You know that Kanye West moved next to Kim Kardashian, right? Across the street from her. Uh -huh. Is that a concerning issue or no? As uh, a woman, I think I think everything Kanye West does is concerning. Can you answer the question though? I just did. Okay, so let's say that Kanye he posts up outside of that house and then he struts outside of that house every day with an AK forty-seven high up in the air, letting off rounds. If Kim Kardashian and then and then and then. People start visiting Kim's house and Kanye starts killing them and then starts threatening their children. If Kim Kardashian one day walks out and says, listen, if you don't get inside of your house and stop uh, putting your AK-47 in the air, we're going to have some serious problems. If if she if he continues to do that for 10 years straight, and one of these days, Kim goes off and blows him away. Mm -hmm. Would you say that she's completely crazy for doing that? Um, but the people of Ukraine feel that they're Kim Kardashian. Can you answer the question? Would she be crazy I, for doing that? I, no. I okay. mean, but okay. what I'm saying is that you are taking the pro-Russia stance without looking at the fact that Why are you evidently both, si both sides of the situation views one views themselves as Kim and the other as their Kanye. Sis their sister. I their sister. No, what have is, I said I that's wrong? pro you're completely wrong. What have I said that's pro-Russian? You are defending the right for Russia to impose itself on the Ukraine. Okay, dear sister, you, you, you may not have heard the earlier part of the show. I'll say it to you again. I understand why Russia did it. I don't think they should have done it in the exact same way that I understand why Russia would bomb a hospital if it's full of a military that's hostile to you. But I don't think they should have done it in just the same way. I understand why Azov and the rest of those folks would set up howitzers by kindergartners. I understand why they would do it for the tactical benefit. I don't agree I have with a it. Question. I have a question. Do you think I just wanted to clear? I just want you and no, I to no, be no, on the no. same I, page. 
I know. I, I want to get on I'm not defending stage. Russia. I said I, I understand. I want to get on the I agree. I have a question. I agree, but let. I, let, let's agree on that. I've said for the record a million times, I understand why the Russians did it. I understand why the Ukrainians did it. I disagree with both. Okay? Well, so I mean, so we don't have to say that I'm being pro-Russia. Go ahead. Okay, so is the whole of the Ukrainian military Azov? Of course not. There's the right sector. There's C-14. There are regular people that haven't that have joined the regular military, as we've covered, that have the 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 rune on there. That's a that's an SS Nazi reference, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, Azov is somewhere between 900 and 2,500 soldiers. They're a battalion. Okay, and the Ukrainian military is like what 126,000, right? Is that about it? What does that have to do? With, what does that have to do with what I just said? What, well, I'm trying to understand because if it's like 900 people in the Azov Battalion, and the military is 126,000 strong, then that's like 0.7 percent of the what, military. But they're everywhere because every time what, what you. What do you talk, mean by everywhere? Like every I said time Mariupol. you talk. That's no, sister. I said Mariupol, which they were confirmed to be there, and Buka, which they shot a video where they were there. Again, a battalion, a battalion is a military outfit that has companies. So you could have 400 of your company, a company in, in Mariupol and another 200 in Buka and another 100 in Kiev. So there, Se secondly, so, secondly, so, secondly, so, secondly, Sadie, Sadie, let's not lose focus here. There are multiple racist militias in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. So much so that they can have parades on the streets and name streets after Stefan Bandera. So, mm -hmm. so yeah. Azov, Azov is irrelevant to the point that I made. The point that I made is that we have video of t kindergarten teachers complaining about Ukrainian military assets setting up howitzers by kindergartens and malls I, I, and going I know, to hospitals. You also agreed that that was that was that was strategic. I mean, it's and I also after. said it was massively immoral. I compared it to Hezbollah and Hamas, but that's the world that I live. I deal with the paradox. I understand it as far as the strategy, but morally, it's reprehensible. Well, Just morally like, reprehensible, it is, but it doesn't change the fact that it's urban warfare. Right. So we don't I have mean, to be simplistic and say that people are defending Russia because I'm saying I understand why the Russians did it. We don't I, want to I, represent I, people when we're debating. Let's just let's just I, say what people are saying. I, I'm just telling you that I come from it. I I come from a point of view that is greatly shaped by my community. In my community, the way that everything has played out is a really, really hot button topic. And it's not because there are people who disagree. It's because there are so many people who feel like this has been going on for so long and the world is just finally getting to it. And now you have all of these people who are pushing Russian propaganda and you Define leave an what entire Russian propaganda is. What is that? Russian propaganda is, is okay. The video that you posted, the video that you posted, which video there is the video of the girl last night. Okay. The young lady it that was, was bombed in Mariupol? Mariana, yes. Mariana, I can't remember what her last name is. Her testimony is Russian propaganda. No, 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 no. Not her Not her testimony. In the beginning, it was a spokesperson from the Russian military or Ministry of Defense that said she was a crisis actor. When she was talking about the makeup, she was, she was referring to the fact that it was a Russian spokesperson who said she was a crisis actor. Okay. That what, what is, is propaganda. And I, and, I, and I put that in my response, which you never responded to. It was Russian propaganda saying she's a crisis actor. And then you have all of these people who are like, she's obviously a crisis actor. Well, she did an interview with the Daily Telegraph in New Zealand. She did the video that you were, you showed last night but when she was talking about she didn't put makeup or anything like that on, it was a direct response to the fact that the Ministry of Defense in Russia was claiming that she was, in fact, a crisis actor. Did you hear her say there were no airstrikes? 
I did hear her say that there we're not talking about the airstrikes. We were ta- you asked me about Russian propaganda. Right, right, right. The, the reason I'm talking to you about airstrikes is because who told us that there were airstrikes? The AP. Where and I read an article. Inf- where did the AP I get that an- information from? I read an article, and I'm going to go back and try to find it. It was um, an article that was done by AP journalists who said they did hear an airplane. Now, they said that they heard the airplane. She said that she didn't. I don't think it was an airstrike. I think that it was shelling. But it was largely but, it was largely reported as this massive airstrike against innocent children in hospitals. Isn't that true? Isn't that how it was reported? It was, but shelling is is shelling somehow lesser. Yeah, it is. Like really. Oh yeah. Like shelling like is really. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure, one hundred percent. It. You know what? You know how I know. Wrong. No, no. You know how I know there's a vast difference between shelling and an airstrike. Hmm. The, the reason is very obvious. That's why Zelensky is continuously calling for a no-fly zone. Airstrikes are massively devastating, and she only heard two shells. That's not the that's not those are not the impressions of that incident that we got from the uh, Ukrainian uh, intelligence apparatus. So, so okay, well, I'm, I'm weird because I, I I'm weird because I think that you know the fact that the hospital was destroyed was bad. However, it was destroyed. I guess I'm not going to split hairs because there was a dead woman, and you know all of these people had to be evacuated. Why? To it, me, it, that's bad. Let's 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 pretend the Russians did that, right? Because I don't know who did it, but let's say the Russians did it. Why? Wh- what motivation would they have to attack that hospital? Well, I'm sure that they're the motivation that they have is because there was Ukrainian insurgents and military there. Okay, so. If I am a commander, right, and I still mm-hmm. have civvies in that hospital, what do you think I would do about putting my soldiers in that in that hospital building? There were three hospitals, and I'm not sure what mil- what where the military was actually located because there were three hospitals. There was one, two, and three, do and I th- think that she said that it was three. Do you think that the Russians had eyes in the sky and that the Ukrainians knew that? I don't know. I wasn't there. Well, what do, what do you think is just basic military tactics? Basic military tactics? I am sure that the Russian I'm sure that the Russians knew that there was military and insurgents in the area and they chose to they chose to strike. Okay. So so you under you so you will agree with me that it is immoral for the Russians to 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 light up that that hospital, even if there were Russian there were Ukrainian assets there. We agree with that. Yeah. You also agree that it's also immoral for Ukrainian soldiers to post up there, knowing full well the dilemma that that would put the Russians in. Isn't that true? Would you agree with that? That that would be immoral for the for the uh, Ukrainian military to set up shop in a hospital where civilian women are. Is it is it immoral? Yep. I guess that. Okay. Yeah, but is it tactically smart? Yeah. It's also tactically smart to take out a building where a bunch of soldiers are. That's that's one on one, right? But my point is, that's not the message that that the intelligence apparatus in Ukraine gave to us. They didn't say there were two shellings which resulted in the death of a civilian because we posted up a bunch of soldiers in a hospital. That's not what we heard, Sadie. What we heard was there was this devastating airstrike. The, the, The Russians were relentless and they specifically targeted a hospital that had children in it. They purposely left out salient elements of information. And my question to you is, why does that keep happening? And is that okay? Or should we know the actual truth about what happens in a given situation? I mean, I'm all for knowing the truth. I'm also all for tactical warfare. I mean, they're being, they've been invaded. I, I mean, if you're invaded, you do what you have to do to survive. Okay. I, I, I mean, I don't have right. like... Amy and I were talking about it. I don't have the same sort of I, I don't have the same worldview that you do when it comes to death and destruction. I just don't. I, I well, wish yes, that I when it, could. when it comes to Russians being killed, you you seem to be fine with that. It comes to Ukrainian and Polish Jews being killed, except for when they're being killed by Ukrainians, like they did during Stefan Bandera's time, then that's a little gray. That's what I've read from you so far. 
in all sincerity. No, in all sincerity, I'm not going to disagree with you. I'm not going to disagree with you at all because I don't have a problem with Ukraine not wanting Russia there. And I don't have a problem with all right. Ukraine wow. deciding that they're going to take every tactical advantage that they have. Okay, so I, that's a sacrifice of children and a woman, and a woman though. They sacrifice, well, I mean, they sacrifice that girl for a military tactic. Russia decided to strike. Okay, so there you go. Russia decided to strike, and Ukrainians decided to sacrifice their own folks to get a uh, to get a psychological operations media boom. Okay, I don't think I don't think that it was. I don't. I think the psychological media boom happened after the fact. Oh, it absolutely I, I don't did. I, I, don't, I don't. I don't. I don't think that that was. I, I don't think that it was forethought. You're completely, I, Sadie. 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 Uh huh. Are you telling me that? The affections and emotions of regular Americans were not stirred when they saw the picture of the hospital being bombed and the and the lady on the stretcher. You're saying oh, that absolutely. that was not an effect. That was an effective psychological warfare. Oh, I, I'm not saying I'm not saying that it was an effective wa psychological warfare. What okay, I'm that, saying is all, I don't know that I, I don't know that there was that much forethought to it. <laughs> okay. I I don't think that there was they, honestly they, that much. They ac they accidentally sent the soldiers into the hospital, then accidentally left out that soldiers were in the hospital. Accidentally put that it was an airstrike instead of two shells. All those were just coincidences. A wonderful Felix Culp. I, I I don't think that I don't think that it was like you. Are like you look at this, and I think that it's weird. And I was talking with a friend of mine about it because we were talking about Vietnam and you look at it as like, it's fascinating. Actually, you have these ideas of what has already been set up to be the most effective when the truth of the matter is that shit happens at in war on a fly. And did they go in there because it tactically was smart? Absolutely. Do I think that they were just waiting for a photo op? No, there's going to be photo ops everywhere. I don't think that they specifically went in there for a photo op. I think uh, they went uh, there because it was tactically the right move. Do you know any psychological operators personally, Sadie? Does my therapist count? No, your therapist doesn't count. Bummer. Sadie, these things <laughs> are planned in in minute detail and those kinds of operations are not difficult i've already talked to you i've already talked to the group about hezbollah hamas al-qaeda all of those folks do that when they're outnumbered to use the media because of the whole jane fonda situation in vietnam there's a big giant 500 page uh, book on it that's required reading so th this is not this is not some thing that just happened on the fly where there's all these happy coincidences that just happen to benefit ukraine sadie the media specifically did not mention. Sadie, how comes how comes none of our media apparatus have mentioned that they are setting up howitzers by schools and malls? I see. I don't know because I don't read America. I I don't read American, so I am aware of this. Like you're asking me something okay, that me I the, can't get answer. Get me the article. Get me the article where 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 it talks about that. What what media apparatus are you? Because I mean, you talk about BBC, which is state-run media. Tell me. No, I think it was actually. I think it was actually. Al I think that it was actually Al Jazeera. Okay, Al Jazeera. Okay, great. Okay, get me the Al Jazeera article that specifically mentioned the schools and the malls. Can I post? Having can I post it in the responses so I don't have to do it now? So you don't have it right now. I don't have it with me right now. No, I have to go back and find it. <sighs> okay, why do you think the American media, just speculate, why do you think the American media hasn't mentioned the howitzers by schools and, and malls? Well, I'm sure that it, because it's propaganda. I'm not saying that, the Mer that Americans and the West aren't using propaganda. I've never said that. Well, the Americans in the West are getting their information about Ukraine from the Ukrainian state-led government, right? State-led media. They're also they're also getting it from the AP reporters who are not technically part of the Ukrainian apparatus. Uh, says who? I mean, they're not being paid by the Ukrainian government. They're they're just not. I, I didn't because, say it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Because, I, didn't, I didn't say anything about being paid. 
what I'm talking about is cooperating in purposeful misinformation and disinformation. The AP didn't mention the uh, Ukrainian soldiers in the building. How come? I'm going to have to go back and look at my, all of the articles that I have saved. The AP definitely didn't mention the soldiers in the hospital. How come? It, since they were there. Because it's propaganda, Ben. Okay, so that, that means that the AP is participating in Ukraine's propaganda efforts then, by your own admission. I guess so. Okay, so that's my problem. Not, I'm not, that's I'm not, my problem. But, but the thing is that I'm not going to fault them for it. Like, I'm not going to, I just can't. Right, because you, and I know you, you, have an anti, you have an anti-Russian bias, so anybody in any thing that does anything that's against Russia, you're willing apparently to sacrifice women, kids, the truth, everything, nuclear war, everything to get at Russia. And what I'm saying is I just have a different perspective. I'm not, I don't want to I don't want to attack Russia. I just want them to leave the Ukraine. I want them to stop going into Ukraine, stop going into Georgia, stop threatening Finland. I don't I don't want to go into Russia. Russia sucks. You want people to stop threatening people? Is that what you said? I want them to. I want them to stop invading countries. Well, you said stop threatening Finland. Is it okay if they threaten Finland or no? No, they probably shouldn't threaten Finland. Okay, and isn't, say that isn't eastward NATO expansion threatening Russia? Oh, I love you. I have to go. Okay. Thank Bye. you. Thank you so much for coming on. That was Sadie, ladies and gentlemen. We're gonna.